first color I used was the relatively darker desert yellow, which I applied over the brown base coat. At first, it was airbrushed as a fine layer, and once this layer dried, I applied a heavier layer in the more prominent areas. I tried to preserve the detail which the base coat brought out by not spraying too much in the crevices and deeper indentations. The crown on top of the head of the chest burster is supposed to be a dark brown color, so I tried to avoid painting in that area. As with the rest of the body, prominent areas of the tail were given a layer of desert yellow. The lower jaw was also painted in the same way. Acrylic paint dries relatively quickly, which allowed me to hold the body of the vinyl model while I painted the rest of the long tail. Finally, once the tail was dry, I could apply the desert yellow to the belly of the beast. I did a final check to make sure all the areas of the tail and limbs were done and added a bit of paint where it was needed. The effect which the airbrush created was quite satisfactory. The darker base coat blended in with the new layer of paint quite subtly and added a lot of detail to the surface of the Xenomorph's outer carapace. For the highlights, I used Tamiya Flat Flesh. I wanted to lighten up the prominent parts of the fold on the alien surface, but needed a color which was light enough to withstand the washes I was going to apply later. I was shooting for a final effect, which was similar to dried bone, which I thought would look suitably creepy. Once the body was done, I applied flat flesh to the most prominent areas of the scales of the tail, always careful to preserve as much of the brown from the base coat as possible. I sprayed the most prominent parts of the skull too, Careful not to lose the brown marking on the upper part of the skull. I did the same to the underside of the model, as well as the limbs and tail. Once the flat flesh color had dried, the Xenomorph had even more subtle shades and tones, but the color was way too dark. I decided to do a 50-50 mixture of white paint and flat flesh, and applied this sparingly to the areas of the vinyl kit which stuck out the most. This final coat was a quick application, and also helped to fix some areas where I was a little too enthusiastic and had oversprayed the previous coat. I included each segment of the tail, to which I applied small spots of highlights to the most prominent areas. I did the same for the other side of the body, and also the front part of the skull. I selected a few key spots of the underside of the kit, and applied paint very sparingly to the limbs. 
I finished by painting the lower jaw and the rest of the tail. The new layer lightened up the carapace quite nicely, but the poor xenomorph looked almost like it had been bleached. This was actually perfect, as I was planning to do some heavy washes on it, which would tone down the bright areas considerably. I painted the gum line of the upper row of teeth, the inner pharyngeal jaw and the lower set of teeth. I trimmed a bit of vinyl from the back of the lower jaw and test fitted it until I was satisfied that the xenomorph was looking suitably menacing with its mouth open to display its sharp teeth. Using some CA glue and zip kicker, I attached the lower jaw to the bottom of the mouth and touched it up with some spare paint. Once the assembly and painting was done, I applied three coats of high gloss varnish. The chest burster is a slimy creature, so the glossier I could make it, the better. I made sure to get the varnish into the deep recesses to get full coverage of the figure. I moved the limbs around to make sure there were no areas behind the limbs which were left unvarnished. It was important to get a good gloss coat at this point, as the heavy washes I was planning to use might dissolve some of the coat and damage the paint underneath. The first wash was made by mixing burnt sienna oil paint with some odorless solvent, which creates a nice red-brown color. I applied the wash with a brush, making sure that the wash went into all the crevices in the vinyl. Once the wash had an opportunity to settle, I used a cotton bud to swab up the excess and tried to leave as much of the wash behind in the crevices as possible. I did the same for the underside of the model eventually opting for a cloth to wipe away the excess. This worked better than cotton buds and the primary wash settled into the crevices exactly the way I wanted it to. Prominent areas such as the skull were cleaned even more than the rest of the vinyl as I wanted it to create a contrast with the teeth. I let the vinyl figure dry overnight to allow the oils to cure somewhat. I didn't want the wash to be completely dry however, as I wanted it to blend with the final darker color I was planning to use. While the primary wash with burnt sienna brought out a lot of detail, I wanted to give the xenomorph a dirtier look, like a creature that skulks around in the sewage tunnels of a spaceship. This was accomplished by applying one of the MIG oil washes, appropriately named Starship Filth. I applied the washes in all the folds and areas of shadow in the vinyl and wiped away the excess with a paper towel.
I didn't give it time to dry too much as I was trying to get the two washes to blend with each other. The result was the bony, grimy look I was hoping for, and as an added bonus, it looked like there was a hint of blood in places. The last part of the painting was to add gory blood around the xenomorph's mouth and on its forelimbs. In order to shield the rest of the creature's body from any blood spatters, I poked its head through a hole in a sheet of newspaper. I have a fun set from Vallejo Game Effects, which has interesting colors like scabs, vomit and rust. More importantly, it has incredibly lifelike colors for dried blood and fresh blood. I wanted to create blood splatters using an old toothbrush. Before I started, I masked the teeth off with some sticky tack as I wanted to paint those by hand later. After adding some thinner to the dry blood paint, I used a toothbrush to splatter the color lightly around the head in the general area of the mouth. Next, I mixed up some fresh blood and spattered it closer to the mouth, a lot heavier than the previous coat. I gave it a quick dry with a hairdryer, as I didn't want the wet paint splatters to run. It also helped to enhance the realism by directing the warm air towards the back of the head and letting the paint flow that way. After removing the sticky tack mask from the teeth, I brushed on some more fresh blood to fill in any gaps and to cover parts of the teeth and gums. Once everything was dry, I gave it a few more coats of high gloss varnish and called it a job well done. I took the alien queen xenomorph out into the warm sunshine where she posed for some beauty shots. So that's our Alien Queen chest burster all done. So long and thanks for watching.